The next part is just to uh, review the summary. The wizard's the same in all cases, just about for every product for IM, you always get a summary before you commit, and then you click install. What happens is we um, perform the installation, but nothing actually happens, because you can see in the title bar, we're still in recording mode. So when we click finish, that'll finish the installation, and then we can exit the IBM installation manager, and now we'll have a response file, which will be saved in the location we specified. It's a whole bunch of XML in that file, and uh, it's got some key uh, elements in there and you can go and edit this file um, according to your needs so if i just um, cancel out of here we can actually uh, see that uh, we have um, some um, xml from an example file So what you can do is you can see that um, we have um, some example XML in the case of this example here that I've got attached to the bottom of my PowerPoint. Uh, we can see that you know where's the repository located. It's got the accept license in it. It's got the features of the offering that we're installing, and uh, there's more information um, in other pages um, within my slides, which just talks about it's got a. You know, set of preferences and stuff like that. So, you know, essentially, uh, what we're going to do is um, continue on with our installation, and As you can see, I've just minimized my PowerPoint to show you what a file might look like. And we can see here that we have the accept license attributes been added, the repository location, uh, the offering, what was going to be installed by this particular recording. So what you do now is you copy the response file that you've created to the target machine. Remember to set the repository location to the location of where you've copied your repository. Um, obviously, you need to copy your repository over as well. Uh, depends on where you downloaded it. If you downloaded it to a shared file system or you know NFS mount or something, then 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 no problem. But in reality, you might find that you know getting the repository and installing it locally will be in one part of your organization where you've got rights to access the internet but uh, the production server may not have access to the internet directly so therefore you can't do all of this on a production machine so you have to do it in stages um, then copy the appropriate information across the target server you then telnet or ssh to the target server uh, switch into root if you've got root or whatever user that you're using um, in the training course, we often use root um, just to minimize security uh, time wastage. Um, but yeah, below is the is the um, command to issue a silent installation. Remember, we need IBM Installation Manager installed locally on the target server, and then it must be able to access the repository named in the uh, silent uh, XML. And you can see here that we have WASMD silent install logs.xml is the logs. We have silent underscore WASMD.xml is the actual response file. Um, we're essentially uh, passing through accept license, and that command will then go and install uh, Wix for application server. A uh, good habit is to use version info, on the, which is located in the bin folder. Uh, that's typically say opt slash websphere. Or IBM slash web slash slash app server slash bin it depends on your route that you decided but you can run this command and it'll report what's installed for websphere if you add the command uh, line option minus maintenance packages with a capital P you'll get a listing of all the details of each one of the fix packs or ifixes but you can do version info.sh um, slash help or something to that effect or minus help to actually get you know a listing of what's available. It's quite a good command. You use it all the time. It's good to use before you do the installation and afterwards if you're doing a
fix pack or some sort of upgrade. Um, yeah, so um, what you would do now is you would use the manage profiles command to um, create a profile. Um, the manage profiles command has been around for a very long time, as I said earlier, um, and um, it's a version 7 syntax, hasn't changed for version 8. I think 6.1 is the same, but at some point I think there used to be some other name for the file. I can't remember what it used to be called now, but um, it wasn't called Manage Profile. It was something like Wes Edmund or some, some funny name. I can't remember now. Uh, just be aware of that for those of you who have got the old versions of Wes still running around. Um, most of my clients use WebSphere 7. There's only a very few that are using 6.1 due to end of life. And the uh, costs uh, associated with keeping older products around. But some organizations pay the price, and so they're still around. So this is uh, WebSphere 8 we're talking about here, not 7, but it will work with 7, this command line. Uh, what it means is we're saying what's the profile going to be, where do we want the profile to be installed, uh, what's the template we're using for the profile. There are different templates. We're not covering that in this PowerPoint, but we can have managed uh, templates, unmanaged templates. We can have admin agents, job managers, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, what's the cell name? What's the... Uh, host name, the node name, um, where's the deployment manager, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we can throw throw into the command line option. So we can have automatic federation and other sorts of cool stuff that's occurring. So for now, that's the end of this presentation. I hope this helps you with your learning web sphere.